What's up, guys? So it has been a minute since I've done one of these. It has been a while, and I figured I would flip through the catalog of our old friend, Melinda K. Lyons, see what she's got going on, see what she's saying, things like that. And well, <laughs> doesn't disappoint content-wise. Because more bullshit. Like, there's more that I agree with. I, you know, got to give credit where credit is due. There's more that I agree with than at any point before, right? But the level of shit that I disagree with remains <laughs> unfathomably large. So we're going to rip into this tear into it, tear it apart, catch it on fire, spit on it, piss on it, and all that happy shit that we always do, right? Again, just like I do with all of my reactions, it's going to be uncut, right, once the reaction starts, so nobody can say that I'm cherry-picking information. It's going to be a straight shot through. I'll give my commentary, my thoughts, my ideas. It's it's like a long-distance conversation with somebody that doesn't want to talk to you, right? We tried that route, right? You know, tried to get the debate boat going, but, you know, somebody just simply just doesn't want to be torn apart. They don't want to be made a fool of in front of the fools that follow them. So we're going to react to it. Main video on our account, first one that popped up. And holy shit, the Barbie love is real, right? Like, all pink background. Everything is crazy. So the first part here that I'm skipping over is, like, her sponsor spot, right? You know, the goofy intro that she bought off of and Vato, you know, and then threw some of her own shit in there. She didn't even bother to replace the music. She just use the same music that was in it and as a graphic designer that sometimes uses templates there's nothing wrong with using a template i just know it's a template because it's a very popular one uh that's used in advertising and things like that so we're going to get into this we're going to listen i need to check the audio here real quick so there might be a quick pause just to make sure that the audio works um but i think it should so let's see here Okay, nope, audio is not being picked up. So, hold on a second. I think I have to add in browser source for the audio. Audio input capture. Let's just put browser. Browser. Name is, okay, fucking hell. Look, and of course, there's a train going by just as I decide. Like, I'm going to record a video. So the train says, hey, I'm going to go by and fuck your shit up. We'll, we'll be right back after the train. So this is
Okay, train is gone. Click. All right, so here we go. I'm going to back it up a little bit. Let's get into it. Here we go. Melinda K. Lyons, or Melinda the Mystic Witch, or Last Frontier Medium, or whatever the hell you want to call her. Or whatever she wants to call herself, rather. Here we go. Myself. And then when Otter Spirits bracelets came in, um, something changed in me, and I can't tell you what it is exactly. Like, it just felt like... Sponsor spot. Sorry. All of a sudden, it was time. And it just feels really, really good. It, it just feels great. And I just want to thank Otter Spirit again for partnering with me. I'm really grateful for this opportunity. With that little thing it out feels of the great, way, right? we're going to go ahead and get started with this topic today. And I just rhymed, so it must be divine. Now, and this is about what makes a witch, okay? So this is something that uh, I got to sit up here for this one because... <laughs> I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but to be honest, I'm going to be very candid. Melinda, there's very little that you need to do to get a lot of hate. Because the only people that actually believe that you know what you're talking about are people that know less than you, which unfortunately is significantly large. Sorry. And this is kind of be like a podcast feel. So this is. Podcast feel. She's got her USB microphone going. Right. right. She picked up a shore and a, and a blue compass arm. Right. Getting the, getting the pro vibes going. It's a good mic. Can't, I'm not going to lie. It's a good microphone. It's a good microphone. I prefer XLR, but you know. I'm not going to hate on the audio equipment, but. Um, Light Warrior News, but this is going to be also kind of a podcast topic to me that this is something I just feel like I, I really need to talk about because I've been getting information from several people where there have been some people um, talking bad about me and I'm not going to say their names. I'm. So when I first, when I first saw this part, I thought she was talking about me again, right? Because always randomly talking shit about Melinda because, you know, it's easy. It's an easy target, right? Um, but later on, you know, she kind of gets into some details and it's like, oh, okay, no, it's not about me. At least I don't think so. Not going to mention their channel. I'm not going to say anything. And the reason flatly is because they don't deserve the recognition on my platform. I work very hard and I work diligently on making my own brand. I definitely have put myself on the back burner for a long time to help other people. And then when I see people that I uh, worked with or people that I've given a chance and did my part, and then for them to basically talk so this is kind of the part where she kind of gets in a little details. I'm like, all right, all right, it's not not talking about me. Or anyone that I'm aware of, because um, definitely never helped me, right? But it is what it is, right? So here we go. Keep going. Trash about me. It was very heartbreaking, to say the least. These people would say that basically I was a fraud, that I wasn't psychic, that I wasn't even a witch. The well, well. I mean, let's be honest here, right? Let's let's call a spade a spade, right? Oh, we're 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 getting blurry. We're getting blurry. Hold on. My camera for some reason has this weird habit of doing whatever the fuck it wants to, and then it just starts going blurry because it focuses in the wrong spot. Anyway, let's let's call a spade a spade here, Melinda. When I first reacted to you, right? Um, you were very against tarot cards in general. You hated anything, or supposedly you said that you hated anything that um, had anything to do with witchcraft. That witchcraft in and of itself was just bad, right? And opened portals and all that shit. My assumption here... And the reason why you changed your branding is because 
you realize that there's a lot of people that were watching you that were into magic, that were into witchcraft, and you were getting a lot more heat from that community trying to tear them down because there's a lot of people telling you that not all witchcraft is like that. So my theory is that you switched up, you pivoted rather, to kind of fit that demographic. Because I read, I read through the comments section. Like the, I'm, I'm almost certain that any negative comments have been completely removed um, because, you know, that's what she does. She just, you know, censors anyone that disagrees with her, which is why I exist. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, you know. So she pivoted the marketing and her branding and all of that shit to fit that demographic just to kind of increase the potential market size. It's, it's, it's a smart move, except for the fact that you leave up all your past videos. And all your past videos from the one that I reacted to before and several after completely contradict what you're saying. And no, I don't believe for a second that you're actually psychic. Two, I don't think you've ever been to hell, uh, much less for 1,800 years. Um, so there's that. And a lot of the things that you say happened to you there, um, or who did what, simply, it's, it's, it's a disgusting thing to put out there, right? Now, Melinda is, and you'll see in this video, is the type of person that will say, well, I'm not going to judge you, but I'm going to judge you, essentially, right? That, that's what Melinda does, right? Um, I'm not going to, I don't have a problem with you, but I think you are an abomination to the world, right? Very contradictory, nothing lines up, and we're going to get into some details here in a little bit in this video that I really want to talk about, so let's keep going. Irony about that is these people came to me for help psychically. They were actually customers of mine. And I, I just find that very laughable. I find that very ironic that the people that ended up being my customers, my clients, because I tell them what they don't want to hear, eventually they end up backstabbing me. And it just goes to show that's how this industry is. That's how YouTube is. That's how work as a psychic or as a witch can be extremely competitive. I work off camera constantly. And uh, when I'm not filming on YouTube or through the membership on my website, I'm actually doing other things uh, like doing tarot readings for clients. And that's very time consuming. Doing tarot readings for clients when she very specifically said that using tarot cards at all. First video I reacted to when we talked about the demon terror, right? And look, she said tarot perfectly fine, right? So the terror thing was supposed to be a joke apparently, but uh, didn't go over very well. Ended up kind of spitballing into kind of hitting her in the back kind of. But um, I digress. I, I just find the pivots funny, right? And I mean, anyone's open to change, right? Anyone can change. But the problem is, is the misinformation continues. And then she targets people that call her out on her fear-mongering and her bullshit. You know, she calls those people out by saying that, oh, these people are saying I'm a fear-monger, you know, all of this shit. Because she is, but she throws it out there to say, well, well I'm not these things, but it's evidently clear that she is let's keep going consuming and i'm not justifying myself i'm explaining something very clear here is that when i'm not uploading it's because i'm still working off camera and i have a lot of things going on and so when i do upload i take moments to meditate and to contemplate and to discuss the topics within myself and within my energy frequency, and more so, what I feel um, needs to be addressed publicly, what needs to be talked about 
when I get this information from my fans and they tell me another fan or a person who used to be a fan um, has decided to backstab me publicly, in some cases, some of these people were public. And then some people said that they were not very public, um, that they just didn't really say my name, but everyone knows it's, they're talking about me. Either way, I'm not a narcissistic person to, at all in any shape or form. I do not think of myself as this amazing person. I do not think of myself as spectacular or the best. Well, um, the way that you talk about yourself on a consistent basis through all of your videos would say otherwise. You are highly narcissistic. You are very vain. You are blind to your own bullshit. Like there, there is a huge part of me that believes or thinks that you believe the shit, half of the shit that you actually say, right? Like the comment of demons don't want to fuck with you because you're a demonologist. Um, demonology is just the study of demons. It doesn't make you a threat to them. It just is what it is, right? And all of your idols, are, have been proven to be um, fakes, right? Your obsession with Zach Baggins, um, dude blew you off and you actually made a video saying that he was going to regret it. I mean, mm, your actions and the things that you say completely contradict the statement that you're making. But hey, you know, if you sleep well at night, right? Best thing on this planet. If anyone really knew me, I have like the worst self-esteem ever. And I work on it every single day. And it's come from years of abuse, from sexual abuse, from abuse as a child, from abuse from boyfriends and other people that I've encountered in my life, you know, recovering from alcohol. Now, I'm going to pause at this point. Because there's one thing I want to make evidently clear. Regardless of how much I disagree with this woman, I do not believe that anyone should have to suffer the things that she's mentioning that she has suffered. And I am not anyone to sit there and say that when it comes to these types of things that she did or she didn't. Um, if she's saying she has, then as far as I'm concerned, she has. And no one should have to suffer that. For as much as I do think that she is a narcissistic bitch, she should not have to suffer those types of injustices. So anyone in the comments caught making a offhanded, tasteless comment about this part of things will be blocked and the comment will be deleted. Um, just making that clear. Okay, so we're, we're here for to correct misinformation and have a little fun while we do it. Alcoholism in a lot of ways. I wasn't an alcoholic. I'll never say that I was. But I partied a lot to the point where it consumed me. And maybe I was in denial. But um, I worked on myself. And do I still have a drink every now and then? Yes. The point of about all of this is that I work on myself every single day. And it's none of my damn business what you think of me. I don't give a shit. This is not to say anything negative to those who wrote to me in concern and thought I should know. I thank you for uh, making that mention to me. I really do appreciate it because then it also helps me to know who are my allies and who are my foes. This is um, a reality in the spiritual community as also in the witch community. It's very competitive. What makes a witch a witch? You know, this is... This is where we're going to start having some real fun. And I just think it's great that she just grabs this, like, random stock photo and just kind of throws it up there, you know. She, <laughs> you can tell, like, later on in the video, like, she just looked for dark images, like, like Halloween images, not necessarily witch images, which kind of gives you an understanding of her own level of understanding of what it is that she's talking about, which is nothing. Let's keep going. 
something I really want to bring up is because a lot of people think that witches or psychics should be this kind of individual and you should meet these criteria and these expectations, but that's not reality. Granted, it is a lifestyle, but is every single psychic or witch in alignment with each other 100%? Hell. So this statement I actually agree with, right? Um, witchcraft is a craft of self-development, and it's something that you're constantly learning and you're constantly be getting better at, right, as time goes on and the more and more you practice. So I do agree with this statement as it stands right now. We're not all in alignment. We don't all do the same thing, um, regardless of your path, left-hand path, whatever you consider yourself, you know, earth worship, you know, kitchen witchery, you know, all of these things. None of us line up 100%. We have overlaps. That's the thing that makes this community beautiful, right? Is the individuality and the differences in it, right? So I'm not here to say that whether or not Melinda is or isn't a witch. Um, I just find her for coming out as a witch suspect and the way that she talks about it um, just doesn't jive. Probably doesn't jive with most of the community. But anyway, let's continue. Well, no, <laughs> they're not. No, in reality, we all have our own difference in opinion. We have our own experiences that help to develop our journey and who we are in our character. And this Agreed. is just common sense. Witchcraft, in my personal view, is a walk of life, is something I do through spells and rituals. But when it comes to being a witch, it is a walk of life. It is something that I have been since I was a child. The truth is, when I came out as a witch to you guys, it was very difficult for me to do because I was still trying to accept this on the outside. It really was a coming out video. It was very hard for me because of the negative stigma that I had received even when I loved witchcraft as a child, but there were so many people who gave me so much crap. So I, I tried to give her the benefit of doubt when I saw this part initially. That okay, maybe before like her whole war against witchcraft and tarot and all of that stuff was like her dealing with her own personal demons. I, I tried. I, I tried. Um, but you know, she makes it really difficult to give her the benefit of the doubt because then she sticks her foot in her mouth like she is right now. Right? Um, she, she just starts kind of going down the line of like what people thought she was doing and stuff like that. And it's just kind of like, mm. I, I don't know. When I told people that, you know, I was, you know, a witch, nobody thought I did that shit. I mean, maybe just different groups of people. I don't know. But here we go. Let's keep going. Up to the point where they didn't want to talk to me anymore. They didn't want to be my friend anymore. They really thought that I was doing black magic. They thought that I was taking over people's bodies. They thought that I was hypnotizing them. And so I was like, okay, I'm not going to be a part of this. I think what makes a witch a witch is a person who knows their power but uses it wisely. That's what a witch is. A witch is a person who knows their capabilities psychically, energetically, will with empathy. Disagree almost 100% with this. 100% I disagree. Um, and the reason for my disagreement on this is because... You can be a witch and not know your power, um, not know what you're capable of doing, not know where your limits are um, or where to start. You, you can be a witch and really not know shit, right? It, it's, it's accepting the fact that, you know, you're new to, you know, the lifestyle, you're new to the practice, you're new to the faith, you know, you're, you're new to, you know, the understanding of, of these things, right? So you don't have to, you know, be like, have any of the stuff that she's saying and to be a witch, right? Which is why I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying that she's not a witch, right? Because 
yes, there's a lot of misinformation in this. And she says several times it's from her perspective and her understanding. That's great. But, you know, the room needs to be cleared, right? It like the, the air needs to be cleared, like things need to be set straight because there's just a lot of misinformation um, and, 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 and some very basic concepts as well, right? And we're going to talk about it. So here we go. Empathy, understand the limitations and understand the consequences that they bestow onto others through themselves. And this is what being a magician, this is what being a witch is now a witch is also a very neutral term a witch is also a male or female non-binary transgender however you identify yourself love to you i completely agree with this statement one of the biggest things that has always irritated me is when i tell people that i'm a witch and they're like oh you mean warlock no motherfucker i mean witch i'm a witch right like witch is a like genderless term Right. Uh, so anyone of any walk of life can call themselves a witch. Right. So, yeah, it's good to know. Right. I mean, it, it's it, that is something that I fully agree with. And I actually really appreciate her saying, um, though, she has used other terms in the past to differentiate male and female. I do give credit where credit is due and i i do appreciate you know for being accurate in that respect let's continue because we're running out of, we're running out of things that i agree with <laughs> um i also um in my book um psychic defense against dark forces i do go deep into witchcraft and talk about black magic and discuss the dangers of black magic and the dangers of how to identify those things so that way you can keep yourself safe because when you dive into witchcraft you are not going to understand how dangerous it actually is depending on the kind of environment and the spiritual influences that you interact with and the people that you are surrounded by it's very, very risky. And this is something that really upset me is that this one particular person, again, I won't say their name, they were saying in reference to the fact that um, apparently I'm a uh, fear mongerer, that I am a doomsday sayer, that I basically uh, don't know anything, that, um, that I'm not a psychic, which is ironic because this person... I agree with all those statements. You are a fear monger. You are a doomsday sayer. I highly doubt that you're psychic. Um, I, think, I think you've watched one too many movies and you see the internet as a platform where you can really kind of like be whoever you want to be and you are being your best movie self, right? Um, by the way, please, for the love of God, get rid of the pink for fuck's sake. It looks like a unicorn vomited in your room. Either that or you, like, sacrifice a unicorn and it just... It's, it's just too much. It's just too much. And, and this, is the, this is coming from somebody that, like, let me be completely honest with everyone. My favorite color is pink. Not that kind of pink. But that's just a little too much. Anyway, let's continue because it gets even more fun after this came to me and needed my help and I helped them stop it get some help being a Melinda you should totally listen to Michael Jordan like I, I, I know you put that in there for comic effect but seriously Melinda take Michael's advice stop it and get some help please let's keep going a witch you're going to find that there are people like these naysayers who are in alignment with you and then the second you uh tell them how you really truly feel they want nothing to do with you they don't they don't want anything to do with you they want to cut you off and they want to cut you out am i the same way absolutely when you start working with demons or devils bye by which i'm gone i'm gone bye i'm not going to talk to you i'm not going to be involved in that negative shit because that stuff is extremely dangerous and extremely toxic and this Negative, dangerous, toxic. But again, let's reference where the word demon comes from. It is the ancient Greek demon, which means guiding spirit. 
demon as it is used today is a relatively new term, right? I mean, as far as new terms can be considered new, uh, imposed by the church. It's a perversion of the original word, um, as the church does, right? Because as we know, the church is full of those. Um, anywho, let's continue because, again, it's going to get even more fun. This is the issue is that a lot of witches in witchcraft do not want to acknowledge the dark forces that reign supreme on this planet and within hell and within other realms in the other side. They do not want to acknowledge this at all. Um, the fact that I even exposed Baphomet or some people say Baphomet, I got so... You exposed Baphomet. Ooh, we're going to have to look for that one. Maybe that's a video in there somewhere that I'm going to have to rip apart that somebody hasn't told me about. Mm, you didn't expose anything. Let me tell you that right now. Because uh, you have no idea what you're talking about. Because, and I know this, I know this. Because I have had, and on many occasions, still have direct communique with Baphomet. So, um, ah, Melinda, 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 Melinda. What? I mean, my, my freeze game is on point, guys. Wow. So, um, yeah. So what did you expose? She doesn't get into it here, but I'll look for it and we'll do another video on it. But let's keep going much hate on TikTok um, to the point where I ended up getting banned from TikTok. Thank goodness that a platform finally realized how much hate and fear you spread and banned you. It makes me happy. In my special places, it makes me happy that you were banned, right? And now she hates TikTok because, you know, they banned her, right? So... Ah, <sighs> at least one platform is safe from you. So I just decided, fuck it, I'm not going to be a part of TikTok anymore. Um, it came to the point where I wasn't even allowed to even speak uh, the truth, to speak from observation from my spiritual psychic. Speak the truth, speak from my ob observation. Those are two different things. Speaking from your observation is your opinion. Speaking truth requires facts. Right? Because fact is truth. Truth is fact. Your observation does not make something true. It makes it your opinion and your perspective. Those two things are not interchangeable on any level. So, if you're not speaking truth and your observation is hateful and spreads fear, then no, you shouldn't be allowed to speak it. Especially if it, you know, could directly, potentially, directly cause harm to other people. Um, now, I'm not the type of person that believes in, you know, banning any kind of speech. I think that people should be able to say what they want to say, and that weeds out the idiots, right? And we know who everybody is. But, um, you know, so I'm not sitting here saying that she should not be allowed, even though I just, I just said it. But she shouldn't be banned. I don't think anybody should be banned. But um, being completely honest, but the way that things are today, you know, she does spread a lot of fear and that fear breeds a lot of hate. And that can be more dangerous than anything that she's talking about. And she does this on a regular basis. And so it, it, it's a bit of a catch 22 because I, I do think that her, what things, the things that she's saying causes more harm than good. Because uh, unfortunately, people actually believe the shit that she's saying. And, but at the same time, you know, by her being able to say what she wants to say, then you know, we all know where the idiot is, right? So, you know, when somebody, you know, when the aliens finally come, they're like, well, where's your village idiot? Right there. Anyway, let's continue experiences astrally if you're not allowed to speak up and say what you truly feel without being castrated like psychically just cut off where is the spiritual freedom then if you're not allowed to speak the truth 
even in the witch community, we have a problem in society. All of these spiritual people saying, oh, it's all about love. And then you tell them something out of love that they don't want to hear. They suddenly cut you off or they humiliate you or they harass you and bombard you. And it's hypocritical. It's, it's, it's a psychic, hypocritical, witchy, bitchy bullshit. I'm so sick of the fake ass witches and bitches that want to sit here and. It's funny that you say fake ass witches. <laughs> oh, just look in the mirror say that they're all about love and they're all about unity and they're all about balance but they don't want to accept the harsh reality so balance um funny she mentions she mentions balance because balance is the understanding of the light and the dark you can't have one without the other right you can't have the day without the night. At the very least, you can't understand the difference. You can't have love without hate. Right? You can't have sadness without happiness. It is the lows that make the highs so enjoyable. Right? So that is actual balance. So when she says balance, I, I, I would adventure to say that she has no idea what balance actually is. Let's keep going. ...of the other side. Now, I want to talk about black magic and white magic and gray magic. What is the difference with these things? There's a... All right, so... What's the difference? What's the difference? Well, first and foremost, right... So it's a little difficult to kind of find, right? But you can find it on the, you, you, can, you can do a Google search and you can find this. So first and foremost, the term black magic is highly racist. Okay, Melinda, Melinda, listen, listen, Melinda. Black magic originated, right? Despite movies saying that it comes from, you know, medieval times and stuff like that. It's, it's a relatively new term that was kind of like picked up with slave trade with you know um, African religions being practiced in Africa when white Europeans would go and you know pick up some you know pick up some slaves from Africa right um, they referred to the things that they were doing as you know black magic because they were people of color right <laughs> and uh, so that's where the term originates from black magic is a racist term white magic well, you can imagine. Gray magic is even newer than white, the differential between white and black magic, which, if I'm not mistaken, is probably like a 1960s, right? Right around Gerald Gardner, like when he started the, the whole pagan revival with Wicca. But um, <laughs> there is no white or black magic. There is no good or dark magic, or bad magic, or evil magic. There's only intention. And I've explained this a million times, and anyone that is actually a witch, this is one of the reasons why it makes me think that this woman right here is not an actual witch, because anyone that is an actual witch, Wiccan or otherwise, that is nature-based, understands this, because magic is derived from nature derived from the energy that surrounds us, that exists around us all the time. And that energy, that earth energy, that universal energy is neither good nor bad. It is, it's indifferent, right? Much like nature. Nature in the autumn with the reds and the yellows and the oranges, it's beautiful, it's serene, it's, it's relaxing, right? You know, but a cold winter night without protection can kill you. An earthquake can kill you. A volcano can kill you. A tornado, a hurricane, yada, yada, yada. The list continues and goes on. It's all nature. The volcano isn't evil for exploding. It's a process. It's a process of chaos. Right? The, the hurricane doesn't happen because, you know, it thinks Florida, you know, like it hates Florida man. Right? I mean... The hurricane happens because it's part of nature, right? 
you know, the tornado doesn't happen because it hates the farmer, right? Or the butcher or whatever. It happens because it's a force of nature. Nature is peace, peaceful, and destructive. It has a bit of both. It is, it is the epitome of balanced understanding that we are divinely chaotic, we can be divinely peaceful at the same time. Magic is much the same way. Magic is neither good or bad. It is the human being that makes the magic being done good or bad. It is the intention that makes magic good or bad. Your intentions, right? You know, like we, we talked about this on the podcast on Friday in brief, where I had mentioned an example that I give all the time, right? Especially for Americans in the United States, you know, we, we like our guns, right? We like to have our guns. You know, we can agree that killing somebody is bad, and some could even view it as being inherently evil, but somebody breaks into your house and threatens you and you have a weapon available and you kill them, you kill them in self-defense, you committed something you did, the act that you committed could be viewed as being evil. But the intention and the reason behind it was to protect yourself and your family. So what supersedes the action is the intention. So in magic, magic is very much the same thing. Magic, magic doesn't give a shit. Magic is indifferent. Everyone has access to it. It's your intention that makes it what it is. There is no white magic or black magic. Melinda has this completely fucked up. But let's listen to what she thinks. big difference and a lot of people tend to find that they're more in alignment with either one um, which is fine i don't judge anyone even if you're into black magic i'm not going to judge you necessarily but i am going to observe with a <laughs> uh, bombastic side eye i am gonna look i'm not gonna judge you but i'm gonna judge you yeah that's the basis here, right? Anyway, this is gonna be, I'm gonna, we're going to end the video right here, but we're going to go for a part two later and finish this off. We're going to get about another 15 minutes out of this later on. But if drop, you know, subscribe and hit that like button if you like my reactions. All right, guys. You guys are fucking amazing. And as always, hail thyself. Peace the fuck out.